It's more than 100,000 times every day. Your lungs have the same surface area as a tennis court. Your brain generates enough electricity to continuously power a light bulb. Your skeleton is flexible, lightweight, and at least eight times stronger than concrete. The human body is a marvel of form and function. It is vital to your quality of life because it is the vehicle for your soul. It is the link between you and life itself. Hi, I'm Leanne Thomason and I will be your guide on this exploration of how energy flows in your body and in your mind. We will examine this your vehicle for life. We will be looking through the eyes of Western anatomy, and as a practitioner of Chinese medicine and acupuncture, I will be introducing an Eastern perspective of the body's energy flow and circulation, known as qi, or prana. Qi is the vital force believed in Taoism and ancient Chinese thought to be inherent in all things. The power of qi can be found in the life-giving nature of breath. It is the force behind the blood flow. It is the experience of energy and vitality, the flow of positive thoughts and friendships. Okay, so chi is a foundation in life that exists everywhere. You know, the sunlight gives chi. The plant has chi. So chi just talks about, it's a description for life force. Everything has a life force to it. There's an idea in Chinese medicine about um, this relationship between um, qi and blood, for example. So blood in its, in its rarefied form, in its basic form, is, is, called, is a yin substance. It's a, it's a, um, it's a, a liquid. It's, it's got um, nourishing components to it. Qi, on the other hand, is, move, is an energy that moves things, and it's more young, it's more active, activating. And separated, the qi will fly off into the air, and the blood, without the qi, will clot and, and not be functional. So the two together are really the optimal state of yin and yang balance. Qi is life and proper circulation of qi is essential to good health. Since qi is something that flows in our body with blood, nutrients, and oxygen, we can nourish our qi just by breathing. Breathing is the only system in our bodies that works with the, both the voluntary and the involuntary muscles, letting it bridge the gap between the unconscious and the conscious minds, giving us access to the deepest places of our bodies and minds. So let's breathe together. Take a slow, deep breath in. Then slowly breathe out. Take another slow breath in, filling your lower belly with air, letting your breath rise into your chest and expand your lungs. Breathe out slowly, letting go of all tension. Feel your body become heavy. As you breathe in, oxygen is absorbed and flows through your body, renewing every cell. As you breathe out, your body releases toxins, residue, tension, and carbon dioxide. Continue to gently synchronize your breathing with this 12 second cycle using the timing on the left side of the screen. Once you balance your breath at this consistent, deep, and slow rate, your heart and your lungs will come into a balanced rhythm known as heart coherence. 
heart coherence occurs when you synchronize your breathing and your changing heartbeat. This leads to a balance between the active and restorative aspects of your nervous system. It is this rhythmic balance of the dual parts of your nervous system incorporated throughout your day with your breathing that allows for a natural state of balance, harmony, and meditation. Breath work is one of the manifestations of yoga and how you use your breathing to develop flow, harmony, awareness of your body. But <clears throat> the way I look at pranayama in the modern world, pranayama means nutrition. Nothing can function without nutrition. So all the great ideas one may have, all the discipline one may have, all the practice one may have, comes to nothing if the body is not nourished. But it's not just the oxygen that's important. It's the chi within the oxygen. And so by doing certain breathing exercises, uh, they may help you to uh, extract a more refined essence of the chi. You know, I'm not going to discuss the different types of breathing, the pranayama, there's other teachers out there. But by breathing and focusing on the breath, we're able to go into the center. And part of the idea of working with chi is to get rid of the unnecessary mental chatter. And you're only going to know it's unnecessary when you're trying to go inward because to the person, average person, everything I think about is necessary in my life. But when you're working with chi, you're trying to refine everything. You know, everything is about refining and getting to a higher level. We open up to that greater piece of who we can be when the nervous system isn't perceiving ourselves being in danger. So while we breathe quiet and train, create coherence, we then open up to higher order centers that aren't available to us when we're in more of that fight or flight response. There are many psychological and physiological benefits to having heart coherence active in our lives. It improves cognitive mental ability, improves reaction times, balances hormones, increases cardiac health, and improves your immune system activity, leading to overall more chi flow in the body. By breathing consciously, you allow your body to function at its optimal state, training it to access its own innate healing ability. Breathing is the most important activity you do and is in fact your key to unlocking your higher potential. It is something so important to you, something that has been affecting you your entire lives. It is what the spiritual leaders teach their students, what Olympic athletes spend years to master. It is crucial for opening your higher brain center so you can work with information on a spiritual level. We are not just this body, we are actually much bigger than that. And we have this ability to connect with the entire universe and to feel a sense of belonging. A sense of belonging not just in one group, not just in one race or you know one ethnic group or belonging in the universe where you see anybody and you feel you know that person is just part of me. We're all we're connected even in the space uh, there's some kind of a network that uh, is not visible to our regular 3D eyesight, but it's there. When you're interacting with other people, people are giving you energy, and they're taking energy out of you. So anytime you have a conversation with somebody, or even if you lock eyes with somebody, you're pulling and exchanging energy. So a person can say just one or two words, and you may feel very disheartened. You may feel very negative about yourself, or you may, it may upset you. That's also part of pranayama, where the exchanges you're having as a social being with other people. So one has to be aware of that also. And there, there are people in your life, in everybody's life, who fill you with energy. You meet them and you feel, ah, I feel so good. Just like a beautiful breath. Also there are people who trigger anxiety in your mind. You meet them and immediately you feel disturbed. And it's very important then to, you know, recognize that and just like if you were in a in a space where there's a lot of fumes you would like to wear a filter you, you don't want to inhale gas gaseous fumes and so you wear a filter the same way one has to filter out bad food bad relationships so sometimes you have to be in that environment but one has to recognize 
okay, you know, this interaction with this person produces this negative effect on me. And I need to be aware of it. I need to avoid that part of the relationship. And here is a person, when I meet them, it produces this incredible joy, incredible energy in me, and I need to seek out. We are all light and we are all sound and it all comes down to a frequency that we are just individual satellites on this planet. You, me, the plant, the trees, everything has a frequency that it's broadcasting. So for me, the question is, what are you broadcasting? I mean, are you walking around with this big hurt and shame and guilt around you or are you walking around with joy and light and just compassion and kindness for the world? So for me, I'm looking for a frequency. I'm listening in to your radio station, to what you're broadcasting. And everything is broadcasting a certain message. The reason the heart beats is because it gets an electrical impulse. Actually, the electrical impulse is actually generated from within the heart. So that wherever there is an electrical signal, there is an electromagnetic field. It goes out three to four feet around the body. So we actually are embraced by an electrical field. And so that electrical field is modulating information that we experience within our bodies and around our bodies. So that could be taken to recognize that we are imposing a rhythm, we are exchanging a rhythm with the people around us. So if we're in a more relaxed and coherent state, there's that positive feeling that is actually felt around people that are exhibiting that coherence. When we deal with healing and we deal with the body itself, we're, we're, I'm looking at a physical form. I'm looking at your physical field. But eventually, what happens to you and what you manifest in your life, all that is contained in the outer layers of your auras, of your pranic body, of your subtle body, of your radiant body. It's, they say that our lives are manifestations and reflections of what's going on inside. So if it's inside that we're projecting all this, then outside should be should be a reflection of what's, what is in you. Pranayama in yoga is often understood as breath work. How do you breathe? Very deep breathing where you open your lungs, fill in your body, your mind is locked into your breath, you understand the flow of energy coming in, exhaling where you release all the negative aspect of what you've built up in your body. So that's one pranayama. Pranayama is a very important concept, but it, has, it is more than breath work. It starts with breath work at its first level, it starts with nutrition at its second level, and most importantly, interaction with people. To, to you know, find interaction that are positive, that give you this incredible energy, because that's a real coherence. When you find people who are in tune with you, you feel so good. And so the search for those kind of people is very critical, just like search for good air. It's as critical, and one has to recognize that. And that's you know, one of the, uh, especially in modern life, where you have some choice on who you interact with, who your friends are, who you're you know, spending time with, you have some choice. And so seeking and you know, benefiting from that choice is very critical. So that flow of energy from the air, from the food, from people is pranayama. If our heart is in this entrained, coherent mode, it drives frequency, as in there's more beta brain waves, and we're also eliciting connection to higher brain centers. So when we're in fear, of course, if we perceive something as fear, we worry about something, then there's a lot of signals that come down from the brain, from the primitive centers of the brain, to prepare the body for fight or flight. But when we move into this coherent entrainment, slow breathing, positive emotional content, then the higher centers of the brain open up. Yes, who, who are you? What is your puzzle piece? Very few people find their puzzle piece. Um, people are searching for something always outside. And if you look at America, you know, one of the big killers is heart disease because we don't take the time to go inward. You know, why am I here? Who am I here? Sometimes it's too painful, so we find things to do. Or sometimes we just, you know, don't want to face it, so we find things to do. And in America, it's, you know, we have a lot of things to do. TV and entertainment, a lot of things to do, so we never find that puzzle piece, which is going back to your heart. 
find your puzzle piece, find your missing piece in the world. And I had no idea what he was talking about. I was just going through the motions of school. But now he said it, you know, if you can find that silent spot in your heart and you go and you listen to your heart, that's where the magic comes. get your message, it's, your, it's up to you to walk that path because it's your lifetime and it's, just, and it's your destiny to do so. But so many of us, we can't become quiet. We cannot find that peace in our hearts because we're so heavily distracted by everything around us. And it's only when we disconnect from the outer world to find pleasure in the outer world that we go inward into that silent space that we are divinely guided, that we all have that inner voice and we know exactly what it is that we're here to do. The human body is capable of amazing healing and growth when the energy flow is balanced. Through healing techniques such as deep, consistent breathing, yoga, biofeedback, and acupuncture, you can reach a state of coherence and strengthen the chi flow within your body. When you keep your body healthy, you provide your soul with a vehicle to navigate the path of life you have chosen. The journey ahead of you is long, and there is still much you must learn and experience. Allow yourself time to listen to your body and its needs. Remember, your body is the link between your soul and life itself. Blessings to you on your journey. Namaste.